Today is August 3rd. It is 2018 and I am here with my good buddy Earl Cohen. Happy birthday Earl. Thank you. Thank you. 83. You look 63. I thought it was like 53. 53. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right, well, good. Well, listen, I, uh, um, I'm gonna speak louder because I'm gonna have to, they're gonna have to hear me on your microphone. So, okay. So I'm gonna speak louder, and, and if you can as well, that would be great. We're, uh, we're just doing a little archive thing here. I, I wanted to, to talk to uh, some of our elder statesmen in the industry, and uh, Earl has been one of my mentors and, and one of my good friends for Oh gosh, I don't know what, 30, 35 years, something along those lines, Earl? Whenever you started. Yeah. Well, when did you start? When did you start in the business, Earl? You know, I'll get this at Valley Steel in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and it's in your file there that yeah. you can see. Yeah, 1954. Yeah. It says. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. there about nine years. Okay. And okay. then I was... Move your hand away, you're covering up your microphone. And it was um, kind of strange, but um, a good friend of mine who was working at uh, Valley Steel um, was um, pirated by L.B. Foster. Now, the, the friend that you're talking about at Valley Steel, was that Jim Barnes? Jim, yes. Jim and I still trade uh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, but not, not for... Yeah. You but talk on talk. the phone. Yeah. Because he worked with you at Valley Steel. Yeah. He was, he was a super, super friend. Okay. Now, you grew up in St. Louis. Is that yeah, why you, absolutely. you started there? Yeah. Now, you had mentioned that uh, L.B. Foster, that you were, uh, uh, you left Valley Steel uh, in the early 60s, 63, 64, mm -hmm. and came out to the Los Angeles area to go to work for L.B. Foster? Correct. And uh, who, how did that, that's a pretty big move. It was, about uh, five, 500 miles or something, <laughs> yeah. 5,000 miles or yeah. it felt like. Yeah. It was a bold move and, and uh, it, it, uh, it really worked out to be a good thing. Sure. The, the fellow that was ahead of me, pushing me and giving me him to, to uh, Dick Anderson from L.B. Foster Company, a very okay. prominent guy. And Dick was based in Los Angeles. No, he was uh, he was a major guy in Houston. Okay. And he was a, a top guy. Yeah. And he had a mind like a trap. Oh, gotcha. Uh, he could remember a piece of pipe as far as you could throw it. You know? Isn't that something? He he was really a slick guy. I mean, and uh, and so were so were the um, the owners of. Of the company, there were very, very smart people. Yeah, and, and it, they, the only thing that they, that they didn't think about too much is paying too much money for the employees, and from that, so many people um, got out and and got uh, other places, and yeah, and it it, it really pulled them down. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> now I remember back, you know, when I got started in the business in the '80s, and there used to be an old saying that all all the pipe guys either came from Valley Steel or L.B. Foster or Gensco uh, out of Texas or LaBarge. Kind of like it was the big the big four. Yeah. Um, and it seems like there's so many people got their starts in those particular yeah. companies. How long were you with L.B. Foster out here in California? It was like about another nine, ten years. Years, nine years? Something like that. You'll see it. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and then you, you went uh, to work, was it for State Pipe or was it Kelly Pipe? I, 
I can't remember exactly. I think it was uh, State Pipe, but. From Foster, I went to um, I think uh, the, the my notes say National Pipe and Casing, you and Fidel uh, Nabor mm -hmm. um, uh, got into you know a partnership National Pipe and Casing. Yep. Back in 1975, somewhere yeah. was around in that area. He was a um, a newbie at uh, L.B. Foster, and I helped get yeah, going. Sure. And um, <clears throat> then he kind of pulled away and wanted to go on his own, which he did. Yeah. And uh, some years later, when things were getting tough, uh, and I was getting tired of L.P. Foster. Yeah. Um, and and um, made a nice, nice, uh, Partnership yeah. with, with, with yeah. Fidel. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> you and Fidel are still actually yeah. uh, partners today. Still. Yeah. In National Pipe and Casing. National Pipe and Piling up out of Seattle, I want to say, with with those guys up yeah. there. Correct. Okay. And I also was, <coughs> I was um, an owner of national pipe and piling right and national pipe and casing yeah which was two different entities yeah the national pipe and casing being in la uh where national pipe and piling is up out of the seattle area mostly mm -hmm. concentrating on piling and mm -hmm. pipe right. piling sheet piling that kind of deal yeah okay it says uh, that in 1980, um, oh, that's when you, yeah, when we were talking about with National Pipe and Casing. Um, but you kind of went back and forth with Kelly Pipe. You would work for them, then you would resign from them uh, to go and work with other people, um, other companies, notably National Pipe and Casing. But uh, at some point, you went back to Kelly Pipe. Yeah. And you were with them pretty much throughout the 90s and the 2000s, um, all at, San, at the Santa Fe Springs location, is that right? Actually, yeah, pretty much so. They, when I joined them, they, they had just uh, changed their location to, uh, from downtown, downtown, Los Angeles, uh, which was by the airport, uh, the not the airport. I'm sorry. It, it was the um, hub of the the LA area. Yeah. Okay. So they went out further to get bigger and better sure. ground and and so forth. So um, that worked out well. Very good. I, I also wanted to ask you uh, and talk a little bit about the NASPD. Oh. <laughs> because the, the NASPD uh, uh, was basically formed in 1975. Uh, Pete Knowles and Jerry Rubenstein got a bunch of uh, pipe companies and pipe dealers together. And uh, they actually asked you to be the first uh, president of the NASPD. Can you tell me how that did, were you guys all just sitting around a round table and, and uh, drawing straws to, or how, how did that no. all work out? No. Pete and Jerry don't particularly care to talk too much, yeah. you know, about things that are, you know, business uh, or, or they, they, so they, so they came to me and said, would you take this? I said, uh, yeah. So um, I ended up the first. Um, first, first president. Yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it wasn't really actually called that at the time, but it was, that's what it was. That basically that's what it was. Yeah. 
Gotcha. And um, probably the best thing that ever ha happened for me is that, you know, because I, I quickly uh, knew everybody. Right. I, and uh, it was really nice and fun. You start networking with yeah. people that you might not uh, normally associate uh, with or do business with, I guess yeah. is a, a good way to put it. But, th you know, this whole thing is a little bit of a circle. Yeah. Like, you asked me who um, who touted you to go to L.B. Foster Company. Sure. Uh, and Vince Leone. Do you don't know that name? I know Mike Leone. That's his son. Okay. And Mike Leone worked for me many times. Sure. And uh, he was with State Pipe, and he, he, he was a good man. Yeah. I mean, and, um, so that prompted me to take their invitation and come out to uh, California to see if we fit. So Vince Leone. Vince, not he wasn't his manager, but yeah. he was my same level. Sure, sure. And uh, I took the job and came to California with my family and, and made a real nice life. Uh, got out of the bad weather, but right. also got into the bigger bucks. Yes, yeah. Um, and and uh, it worked out very, very well for everybody. Well, I know the, uh, the NASPD is, is grateful, you know, to all the, the leadership and everything that that you brought uh, with that um, and acting as the first president. And I remember, you know, you kind of uh, recruiting me to be on the board uh, many different times. And um, it, at that point, it was nice to be able to have a, a friendly face in board meetings and kind of, you know, bring me along. Um, and so, you know, now we're kind of doing that again. Now the now I'm a little bit older, and I'm we're bringing along the younger guys. So uh, you were a uh, uh, really great representation there. I appreciate it very much. One of the things I was going to ask you about with the NASPD, we've we've met in a number of different cities. Mm -hmm. A lot of times are the same old cities. You know, Houston, Las Vegas, mm -hmm. San Diego, uh, San Francisco, et cetera, et cetera. Can you remember any odd layouts? Uh, uh, I was talking with Bobby Jacobson the other day, and, and I asked him about Acapulco. Yeah. Now, I'm, I imagine you were at that meeting in Acapulco in 1979. I was. Uh, what was that like? It was, it was uh, just new. And it was the first, one of the few, I mean, one of the first, and um, it went very well. It okay. got, you know, it was very, a lot of people enjoyed the, the, uh, the, the fun there. And, sure. And, but it's not as much fun anymore. That's what I understand. <laughs> but um, <sighs> Well, the other one that he brought up was uh, the Bahamas. You yeah, got, you guys did a, a yeah. deal at Na in Nassau, yeah. in the Bahamas. Yeah. Were yeah. you at that one as well? I was at all of them. You were at all of them. I love it. I was there. <laughs> any uh, any special uh, uh, memories or anything that sticks out? Uh, anybody doing any dancing on the tables or cliff diving into the ocean or anything like that? If you got about a couple of years, I could show it to you. <laughs> No, we all had fun. Yeah, we went to, we went to and from Mexican thing, and uh, yeah, I went with cool. Bobby and and uh, Carl Arnold and sure. Rubenstein. I'm not sure. Yeah, Beth and Jerry's. we went cross country. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was fun, you know, and it was a good, good, uh, good way to uh, enjoy your life. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, very good. Um. Were there uh, usually a certain set of friends that, that you would like to always meet up with at the meetings? I remember often seeing you and Elaine. Uh, yeah, I was dinner, with her. 
having dinner with uh, Jerry and Linda uh, Rubenstein. We became very good friends and still do. Yeah. Uh, we talk frequently and uh, sometimes we go out of town with them. Sure. Um, and uh, they're just good friends. Yeah. And there, there are a lot of good friends that were made, but, um, and we saw Pete Knowles fade away, which was too bad. Yeah. Um, and some of the people who really did good jobs and really supported the, the, uh, the effort, um, and that's what made it go. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, and that's what I, one of my big takeaways, you know, from, you know, uh, being active in the NASPD is the friendships that, you know, we forge. Um, a lot of times uh, it's, you're, you're forging friendships with people that you don't do business with necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis, but yet we all have a common goal, which is to, um, you know, be part and active of the NASPD so that it helps uh, all the other companies, you know, achieve success and and learn about new market updates, etc. So, the friends, friendships that I've gained, you know, with, even with guys like you, that uh, that really have meant a lot over the years. So, thank you. Yeah. Well, um, I think that about wraps it up. I just uh, wanted to thank you again. I wanted to wish you a happy 83rd birthday today, and uh, we're looking forward to going to lunch and and uh, having a good time. So thank you very much, Earl. Thank you. All right, appreciate you.